Yesterday we got the transformer pad behind me installed and this morning we had somebody from the electric company stop by and install this grounding grid. This is just basically a copper wire and a couple of, uh, couple of grounding rods, grounding electrodes that go in the ground next to the, uh, the fiberglass shell. Now they've done that, uh, we can start to get some other things installed as well. The big one being the backboard. So our backboard is gonna go just down here in that low spot. It's gonna be buried four feet below grade and stick up about six feet above grade. It's made out of a couple of 10 foot long four by fours. We do have still uh, one other grounding electrode, uh, grounding rod of our own, grounding electrode, that we, uh, we need to install. And then the grounding electrode conductor, which is that bare copper wire, will run from underneath the ground up onto that backboard as well. And that's what's gonna ground the secondary service, essentially, it's gonna ground the meter, basically. The stuff that they put in here, the grounding grid is to ground at the transformer. I'm really excited about getting this, this backboard in. It is gonna be a little tricky. Uh, there's a few things we gotta line up, gotta make sure the conduit comes up in the right spot. Um, and we can't just fill in one, we can't backfill everything first, because it all has to come up together. So the plan is basically to, uh, get the, the, the bottom to the right depth, so you get it four feet with crushed rock underneath. And then once we've done that, we can position the backboard in place. We can brace it uh, to hold it steady. Then we can backfill a little bit more around it to a depth of about three and a half feet. Then we can lay our conduit from the transformer across to it, which will be our secondary service. And then we can start to backfill that whole area around. So I'm gonna mark these sides. Yeah, that was pretty good. Thirteen foot six. Thirteen foot, yeah. So it needs to move like that. And then probably thirteen three. Put that. Try that. I mean, this is only temporary. You know how things are only temporary and then they're like there ten years later. Happy with that? Yeah. Okay. He doesn't need to make it all the way to the top anyway. Did you drive for a little bit? We are making progress here. So we have the backboard loosely braced in position. It's in about six inches of fill at the bottom. And this is the compacted sand that we're going to be laying our first pieces of conduit on. And you can see we've started to assemble that now. So this conduit they're putting in here, this is a Schedule 80, two and a half inch PVC conduit. 
and this is going to be running from our backboard over here to the transformer that you can see just behind me. And this is what will be supplying the 100 amp service to that panel. It is a very short run, it's only about 15 feet or so underground plus the, the vertical uh, increase as well. So a pretty short run, but the key here is we want to make sure that that uh, conduit comes up in the exact right spot for the meter. So we've got a couple of clamps on there just holding it in place for now. That'll let us get everything sorted and then we're going to be able to cut and glue these fittings that go into the bottom section here on the bottom of that conduit and bring that over to the transformer pad. So that's what we're going to work on next. Push in a second. Yep. Say so when? Push, push. Kick, kick it. Okay, I think that's in. Oh, that's a hard one to do. There's a first one. All right, job complete, kinda, I guess. We've got the backboard in and we've got the conduit running between the transformer pad and the backboard, which is great. We've still got a lot of fittings and things to install, so we need to put on our expansion joint. Uh, that's to account for any ground movement to make sure that the the, uh, pipe, the conduit joints don't, don't break open. And then obviously we've got to populate the backboard. We're gonna have our meter as well as several receptacles on there. You can see our grounding electrode conductor, that's the, the bare copper wire coming out there. That's connected to our two grounding electrodes or ground rods underground. And, uh, and yeah, 
that's uh, that's kind of where we got up to you today. Uh, it is just coming up to five o'clock now. I still have a little bit more energy to do a little bit more. So I'm gonna see if I can get a piece of conduit on here, maybe get this expansion coupling on. I don't know that I'll get onto installing the actual meter today though. But once we do, that's gonna be really exciting because we can start to pull wire through for the first time. Okay, next fitting on. There are several different ways that you can cut this pipe, this PVC pipe. And this is some pretty thick stuff. This is uh, two and a half inch schedule 80, so really thick walls on this. I have found the best way to cut all of this pipe is using the miter saw. I've got a fine tooth blade on there with sort of a lot of teeth around the outside. And if you take it steady, take it nice and slow, and it cuts really, really clean. I found that works on this schedule 80, some of the schedule 40, including the thinner, smaller stuff. It also works on the poly pipe that we're using on the well. It gives a really, really clean cut. And is that the cut directly from miter saw or did you deburr it as well? This cut is straight off the miter saw just now. And then I just use my knife around the outside just to sort of cut that corner down um, and just sort of ream that down. Uh, I do have a, a deburring tool and a reaming tool, uh, but the, they don't really work on something this large. And also on the outside edge, it's just easier to use a knife, to be honest. This is where we're going to leave it for today. We've got the backboard in, we've got it pretty much filled around, and we have the conduit going through. We're going to get tidied up. It's five o'clock on a Friday evening. I'm just going to put a cap on there and call it a day. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please make sure to subscribe and follow along as we build our dream home here in Vermont.